Hello, friends. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the actual cycle of abuse and what to do to avoid getting into an abusive relationship again. Hey, friends. Welcome to the But Still She Thrives podcast. I'm Christy Jade, adoring wife, adoptive mama, empowerment coach, and queen of helping women who have gone through abuse turn their lives around and start thriving. I know you are sick of feeling not good enough, questioning your decisions, not knowing how to say no, and the stress is still in your body and in your life. You're looking for more joy and just some freaking peace. You want to feel confident, take your power back, and run your life your way. So if you're ready to go from surviving to thriving, grab that venti mocha and let's dig in. Do you need help leaving or help healing from an abusive situation? I got gotcha. you. I want to help you. That is what I am here for. It is my specialty and I am giving $20 off your first call for a limited time. Um, it's empowerment coaching call, 60 minutes, and then we can go from there and you can sign up over at bit.ly B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash first coaching call. I would love to help you. So first, we're going to talk about the actual cycle of abuse. There is a actual diagram with a cycle. And when I saw this for the first time in my therapy office many, many moons ago, I felt overwhelmed with emotions because I thought I was kind of crazy. And seeing this diagram made me feel validated and seen and like, this is a real thing. And I felt like I kind of had proof now of the cycle. So let's dive into this cycle. Maybe you already know about it. Maybe you don't and you hear this and you're like, that's me. That happened. That happened. That happened. Oh my gosh. And it will be kind of a mind blow for you. I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. Let's go through those stages. I also first want to remind you an abusive relationship can be not, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It, it often is, but it can be a parent. It can be a sibling. It can be a friendship. It can be your Aunt Tilly. It can be a boss. It can be a gerbil. I had a gerbil to bit my nose. Hey, it's a real thing. Okay, so let's get into the cycle of abuse, but keep that in mind because a lot of us who um, have gone through abuse as a child or choose, you know, abusive relationships, there's something in us that may, that may be a pattern and we choose abusive friendships, relationships, et cetera, et cetera. So we can kind of somewhat, what they say, attract. I don't like to put it that way, but we can attract certain types of people or tolerate certain things because we are comfortable and used to them. So let's dig in. The first phase usually is the calm. Okay, that's what starts it off. Usually you meet someone and it's that honeymoon feeling. They're calm. They're on their best behavior. And the relationship is relatively calm and it's peaceful. So, you know, this is where you can kind of get tricked. Okay, this is the honeymoon phase, which most relationships go through. The difference is the extremes and what comes after. So after the calm comes the tension building phase. This is where tensions increase, there's lack of communication, and the victim starts to feel fearful or second guessing themselves, starts to feel somewhat maybe uncomfortable. And then this can lead to an incident. And why is that? Because the abuser, the controller, senses that tension. So they're going to cause the drama and they're going to make the victim pay for having any emotion or any reaction to whatever has caused the tension, right? So the incident can be verbal, it can be emotional, and it can be physical. I want to remind you, physical abuse is not the only type of abuse that is there. I still have clients that come to me and say, well, I, well, they didn't hit me. And that doesn't mean it's not abuse. It is very much still abuse, okay? So verbal, emotional, and physical abuse is the actual incident. That is the next stage. Then comes the reconciliation. This is what really got me when I was younger. The reconciliation, flowers, poetry, donuts. I got donuts. I love donuts, you know. They got me back with the donuts. This is where the abuser apologizes sometimes. Sometimes they won't. If they're desperate, they will. Sometimes they will have apologies with a but on the end, which is a sign of an insincere apology. But sometimes they can fake it really well, right? Apologizes. Gives excuses. 
blames the victim, right? They may say, I'm sorry, but when you did this, I just da 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 da, right? It's that flipping it around. Denies the abuse occurred. This can happen too. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you're just really sensitive or uh, that is not what happened. You're remembering inaccurately. They literally, and we've talked about this, but gaslight you, make you feel crazy. There is a plethora of things, of tactics, strategies they will use to try to win you back, reconcile, and they'll try different things and see what works best for you. They learn what works and then they will use it over and over. Okay, then we go back, right? It's a cycle. This is the cycle of abuse. It does not end there. It's not flowers and a beautiful day and the rest of our lives are magical. Not with an abuser. With an abuser, it could be a day later. It could be a month later. The calm comes and then what happens? We go back to the tension building. As you get more and more comfortable through the years, if you are with someone for multiple years, you get more comfortable with them, you may start to speak up more. You may get really sick of this abuse. You may still be afraid of them, of course, but you start saying, you know, I don't like when you do that or whatever. You start speaking up more and that can build more tension. So then the tension building is even more. The incident can then become more severe and then the reconciliation may have to be a little bigger on their end too, right? It might be a grander gesture. So this cycle continues, continues, continues. And a lot of us have held on to the hope that it will end in the calm. I am here to tell you this cycle never ends at the calm, okay? I want you to hear that again. The cycle doesn't end at the calm. This is a cycle that continues and continues and continues. And the only way out of this circle, picture it as a circle, it's a cycle, right? The only way out is to break it. That's the only way out of this. So I highly encourage you to think about this cycle, evaluate if your relationship is representative of this cycle of abuse, and let's continue on to really thinking about how you can avoid getting in these situations in the future. If you are out of a toxic relationship, how do you end up not back in one, whether that's a romantic partner, a friend, even just surrounding yourself with a new, quote, family, right? Like we can create families of our own that aren't blood related. How do you fill your life with healthy people? We're going to go through a little list of five of them. One way is to look for the unhealthy perfectionists. They might come off as perfectionists, but it's really control. And they expect you to fulfill their needs, maybe all of their needs. So they will isolate you and say, oh, I need you. And it makes you feel good, but then they're also really just controlling you. That leads to codependence, which is what what got you in a toxic situation in the first place. It can also look like someone who's easily angered or frustrated. They may call it perfection. Oh, I'm just a perfectionist. But if every little thing is frustrating them, that is also a red flag. Number two, mm. mood swings. Do they flip out at you? You're like in Whole Foods and they flip out because you forgot to grab their organic ketchup. <laughs> or are they one minute loving all over you and then the next... You have a different opinion than them, and they're really up in their feelings and angry about it? Are they like Mr. Charisma around everyone else, but you get the dark side of the moon? Mm -hmm. That is not fun. We don't like that. Rational people, they get up bad days, right? We all got moods. I got PMS mood once a month. Steer clear, okay? But when there is a clear pattern of anger, control, or general, like extreme up and downs, it is time to flee Okay, number three, watch out for those who do not take responsibility. This is a huge one. And not just when they're desperate to get you back when they have the flowers in their hand, okay? I'm talking the everyday, nitty gritty, something, a little conflict comes up or whatever. Even paying attention to how they talk about other people, how they deal with other people. If they're talking about a conflict, note, do they ever take responsibility in that conflict? Or are they always blaming everyone else for everything? another sign to stay away. Number four, uh, I know this is such a trigger for a lot of my clients, making sure you feel seen and heard. This is huge. Pay very close attention how this person makes you feel inside, right? You got to get in touch with your body, girl. Are they listening? Are they truly hearing? Not just listening, not just pretending and looking at you and like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Are they truly hearing and actually responding 
in a way that makes you feel like they hear you and you feel seen? Most importantly, are their actions actually showing that they see and hear you and they care about you and your opinions? If not, we're queens here. You are worth more than that. It's time to find someone who lets you be you and loves you for it, right? Your opinions and all, they value you. Don't stick around someone who does not value you. For the love of Jesus. Okay, number five, look for signs of jealousy. Sometimes we can confuse jealousy with love and care. Did I kind of think it was cute when my ex-boyfriend years ago got a little jealous when we were out at the bar and some guy came up to me and he got real mad and crazy? For a second, I kind of did. I'm not going to lie. It was not cute. He was controlling, right? He was controlling. And then it went further than that for me too, right? They start, they look at your phone. They might break into your email. Um, You're wearing a cute outfit. They're asking where you're going. Who are you going with? And you can see in their body, they are stressed out and they feel out of control. That's why they're acting like that. It's not because, oh, I love you so much. That is not showing love. That's showing control. That's showing suspicion. And often, on a side note, a lot of people who actually we should be suspicious of, there are a lot of abusers that are cheaters as well, are often suspicious because of their own actions. That's a whole nother episode. But do you feel like you're walking on eggshells, afraid your words or actions may get them jealous when there is nothing to be jealous about? Do they tell you what to wear? Do they, in general, do this control thing to try to keep you isolated. Another sign of jealousy can show up that way, right? They want to keep you away from your friends, your single friends. They don't want you going out there single friends. They might even keep you from your family. That's a whole other episode too. We got a lot of content we're going to cover in here. But isolation is another thing. We'll add on to the jealousy side of things. But if you feel like they are constantly, if they are frequently, if there's a pattern of jealousy, I'm everyone, maybe everyone can have their one day they got a little jealous, okay? But you know what I'm saying. If there's a pattern of jealousy, squash it. Squash it by running. Now, in general, the question is, do you feel free? At the end of the day, in a healthy relationship, you feel free. I mean, let's be honest, okay? Do I feel as free as I did when I was 23 with no husband or kid? Not exactly. I was like a bird flying way too high and way too too far. (laughs) But you know what I'm saying. You can feel free in a relationship where you feel free to be yourself. You feel free to have your own opinions, to speak up. You feel free. And when you are with someone abusive, you don't feel that way. You feel trapped. You feel like a caged bird. You're like, "I I was a bird. I think I'm a bird, but I'm not flying like a bird. That is definitely a sign. It is time to get out before it gets worse. It will get worse. And we will do another episode about that, giving you all the peeps, all the peep shows. All right. We are going to talk about that in a very important episode. It gets worse. Okay. So I love these signs because it shows you what you can do to avoid getting sucked back into a toxic relationship again. Again, it can be romantic. It can be platonic. It can be a work situation. Whatever it is, you get to choose to be in healthy relationships. And hopefully those little signs of what to look out for helped you. Now, don't forget, if you are a victim of any kind of abuse, emotional or physical, call 800-799-7233 for support. And obviously, I will catch you in the next episode. Smooches and deuces. Girl, if you are over the lack of peace, the lack of setting boundaries, not feeling confident, questioning yourself, it is time to get some coaching. This is what I do. This is my specialty. It's what I love. And I can help you more quickly than you think. If you want to grab a call with me, I am offering $20 off of the first call. And there are only 10 spots a week and they fill up quickly. So definitely act now if you're interested. And you can find me over at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash first coaching call to set that up. I look forward to helping you go from surviving to thriving because you deserve to be the queen you have always been. Let's chat.